Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are going to read Luke chapter 12, verses 37 through 48a. And you'll see why. Now, this is a challenge and I hope you're willing to listen. Blessed, the, this is red letter edition, which means these are the quotations of Jesus himself, right out of his mouth. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Mm. Pat's two cents. Can you imagine watching Jesus gird himself to come and serve us? Whoa, what a sight. All right, 38. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Pat's two cents. He's really allegorically uh, referring to his coming, his second coming. All right. Back to the word. Verse 40. Be ye therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speaketh thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to, and he starts to begin, and shall begin to beat the man, men servants, and maidens, and to eat, and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in that day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Challenging, isn't it? Okay, let's go on. Verse 47. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Remember that. Verse 48a. But he that knew not and did commit such things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. I'm stopping there. The reason I'm stopping there is because I never told you guys this, but I had a dream. And it's the only dream I ever had of hell. But the interesting part about this dream, one day I planned to paint a picture of what I saw. It was very glib. It was very gloomy, dreary sad, lifeless. Mm. Excuse me. Now, listen to this. In this dream, there were many levels. You know, like a building has the first story, second story, third story. Well, in this, the building had no walls. There was a bottom story, a next story, every story, every floor looked exactly the same. Everything was in grayscale. There was no fire in this one. 
excuse me, I just had nuts. <laughs> there was no fire in this dream. No fire anywhere. And somehow I knew that this was hell. And that's why I read this, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. Hell is also the separation from God and everything that's beautiful from him. You hear me? Everything that's life itself. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Excuse me. So what happened in this dream, I'm looking at people. Male, female. Here's the weird part. I couldn't tell the difference. There was no gender identification on their bodies. They were not what you would call, um, oh, I can't think of the word, a anatomically correct. Let's put it like that. Details were not there. Just a plain body like a mannequin. And faces with no color. There was no race difference. They all looked the same color. Ashen, bloodless, and pale. Every one of them. No one lighter than or darker than the other. All the same tonality. They had singed strands of hair on their scalps. They were basically bald with singed strands. Nobody had long hair. Nobody had a head full of pretty hair. It was all pretty much dead and gone with a few little nubs there and a few little strands of singed hair. Way less than a newborn baby that's practically bald. I mean, it was really crazy. And here was the trip. Every floor had nothing but a ladder and a hole. So they could move around. But when they left their floor and they went to the next floor, they climbed these stairs and they climbed through a hole, almost like a ladder. They climbed through a hole and that hole would be on the next story, the next floor. Here's the trip. The next floor looked exactly the same, that same glib look. It was a plain, boring, cement looking floor. No cushion, no mattress, no, no hay, nothing to sleep on. No wall, I mean, no walls and no windows. Really weird. And then I saw one climbing up another story. He went up higher. And he went through the hole. And when he climbed through the hole, he landed and rolled onto the floor and stood up. Nothing there. It looked exactly like every floor beneath it. And everybody on every level looked exactly the same. Here was the sad part. Nobody was aware of, it, of the other person so every person even though there were other people around them in their conscience a conscious state they were totally alone bizarre no clothes just skin covering their frame no anatomical differences at all the only features were on their faces. They had arms and legs, but no features. No fat, no skinny, no tall, no short. Everybody looked the same. Every floor looked the same. It was dreary. And they could see outside because there were no walls. But guess what their view was? Black trees. Gray trees burnt to a crisp the smoke was still going up in the air from the trees having been burnt no flames this was like an aftermath of burning it was as if they all went through the flames but they didn't have to live in the flames throughout eternity but all the damage that the flames did that's what they had to live with you talk about it, an empty void, a pit of despair, depression to the max. That was their eternity. Nobody to talk to, even though there were people all around. 
They never bump into them. Every floor had two or three people, and the two or three people knew nothing about the other person on their floor or anybody below or anybody above. And no matter how high they went, everything looked exactly the same. And when they looked out, there was nothing but singed, black, burnt soil, black trees, bare trees, just, I mean, the barks burnt off of them, just just ash, ash uh, remains, remains of burnt trees like in a forest fire. Really, really bizarre. No sunlight. The sky was dreary like on a real dark, cloudy day. You talk about depression. So anyway, that's why I read this. Because I do believe from reading this that hell has different levels of torment. And to those who were cruel, to those who were treacherous, oh my goodness, they're going to have to pay through the nose in torment. They're going to be in total agony. Whereas the ones who just didn't know or they, you know, just didn't accept Christ or they were just doing their own thing and they got caught and died, they're just in a, not oblivion because they're aware, but they're, they're just in, in, uh, in eternal void, eternal nothingness, no affection, no conversation, nobody just alone. Oh, anyway, okay, but that was, I wanted to describe that to you, because I also believe heaven is the same way. There are greater and greater and greater rewards. The more you give to God, the more you love, the more you bear fruit, there are great rewards. The more you deny yourself, and when you deny yourself, you don't miss it because God rewards you in an instant. He rewards us here in the land of the living to feel his smile on you. That's phenomenal. To feel his pleasure. You feel him rubbing his hands together with a big grin as if he's telling you, Ooh, do I have something great for you? And beautiful things start happening in your life. And you knew it. You felt him. You felt his pleasure, his glee. See, he doesn't require things of you without reward and we don't have to wait for all our rewards in the sweet by and by he takes care of us right in the here and now up close and personal so let's stay prepared let's stay ready let's keep our lamps trimmed and burning let's stay close to his bosom let's listen for his direction listen for his warnings Listen for his teachings. Depend on his wisdom. Depend on his strength. Go to him for his peace. The Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Not on your problem, on him. God bless you as you prepare for our Lord's coming. God bless all of us as we continue to prepare for our Lord's second coming. God bless you. And please, whatever you do, don't be slack. Stay ready. <laughs>